Okay, good morning. Um, how is everyone today? It is the day after Christmas. Hey, Angela. Oh, Wade is here. We've got Salandal, Santa, Vias. Good morning. Um, <laughs> hey, Visor VF. Fearly Battle. Is it Rajasi? Did I say that right? Lily's here. Colin's here. Wade says, yo. <laughs> So, oh, I was afternoon for you. Okay. TPPR17. Brittany is here. Good morning. Day after Christmas for those of you who celebrate it. We've got Momo Smith saying good day from Australia. Nice to meet you. We've got Gayen. Good morning, gorgeous, he says. Nice blue shirt. It's my favorite color. Robert, hey Catherine, I hope you had a great Christmas. We've got Blake here. So I had some technical difficulties getting on. I was trying to sign on from my computer. That's why I'm in my office trying to do it from my Mac. I don't know, is it a Mac thing that I can't get on a YouTube live from my Mac? This is the second time I've tried to go live. Oh, Blake. Everyone, please say a prayer for Blake so he can recover quickly from COVID. So, I don't know if it's um, a Mac thing or why I can't go live on my um, computer. But Lily, I want to tell you, I when I tried to go live on my computer this morning, I did see the slow mode. Like, uh, you know, the switch you can flip. But... The second time I've tried to go live on my computer and it says going live and there'll be this wheel spinning, spinning, spinning. So I tried for about five minutes that I'm like, I better just switch over to this. So we've got Cipru93 and BW. BW, do you also follow me on Instagram? Because your picture looks familiar. Okay, so did you guys see the topic for today? Elaine is here, hello. The topic is how to become who you want to be in 2022. Okay, we've got Jerry on, we've got Mia on, and people are still wishing me Merry Christmas, thank you. Uh, what are you drinking? This is a smoothie with um, bananas and pineapple. <laughs> Danny's here. Blake asks, have you ever had COVID? I had it in April. I quarantined myself in my room for like seven days, I think. I didn't even let the kids come near me or hug me or anything. <laughs> and I would, I would just text Rob what I wanted to eat. And then he would like leave it outside my door and text me when it was there and loud. Open the door, sneak out, get the food, shut the door and lock it before the kids would see me because they would be so like, mommy, and I couldn't let them. So, uh, Lily, no, I've never heard of those cows. Sorry. Uh, thank you, Gayen. So the topic for today is how to become who you want to be in 2022. It's too bad it's not 2023 because then it would rhyme. How to become who you want to be in 2023. <laughs> I may have a thing for rhyming. I don't know. I am a poet after all. Uh, Brittany got a blender. Cheers to joining the smoothie gang. I don't know what I would do without my blender. <laughs> uh, it was a good, it was a good Christmas, Derek. Have you ever dyed your hair? Yeah, many times. Um, I was born blonde and I had really, really light blonde hair when I was younger, uh, when I was a kid. And then as I got older, it started turning more of a dark blonde or what they call dirty blonde or dishwater blonde. So you can kind of see this, the darker shade, that's like my current, that's like my real shade of blonde. 
you see at the roots and then the lighter ends I get highlights sometimes so it's been a it's been a few months but the darker blonde is my natural hair now and then the lighter ends are because I got highlights so you can usually tell if someone's hair is natural or not by the color of their eyebrows so you can see my eyebrows are a darker blonde like the roots and then it's lighter where I have highlights but sometimes Sometimes people have lighter hair on the ends just because they're out in the sun a lot. Or you could do something natural like put lemon on your hair and then go um, in the sun and it will lighten it up. So sometimes just being out in the sun a lot will lighten your hair. But I do get highlights sometimes. But you can see I'm, I'm dark blonde at my roots and my eyebrows and then I got highlights on the ends. So that's a lot to talk about hair. Okay, so... Um, let's see, uh, those of you guys who've been on my live streams before know that I usually do a little bit of teaching for 10 minutes, sometimes 15, um, and then I go into answering questions. So I will do the little teaching and then we'll answer questions. So you'll, you'll have to retype in the questions after. But the topic today was how to become who you want to be in 2022. So, I don't know if I've ever read you guys a poem from my latest book, Poetic Prescriptions for Pesky Problems. Um, but if not, I, I wanted to read you guys a poem called You Can Become What You Thought You'd Be. Eleanor is here. Hi, Eleanor. So, if you've ever been like, I just want to be this kind of person. Why can't I be that? Why am I stuck being the way I am? Why can't I change? Well, this is going to give you your answer. Hi, Sri. The thoughts inside your heart and you are one. So you're one and the same with the thoughts in your heart. Okay? Whatever thoughts you think, you will become. How many of you guys know that you are basically a product of what you think all day? There is a purpose. God has not forgot his promise, though your life appears to rot. So sometimes you go, is God even hearing me? Can't, like, I prayed and it seems like nothing's happening. My life is a mess. It's just rotting. Hey, Benjamin. But God hasn't forgotten his promise to you, no matter how rotten your life may be right now. For dreams to come, at times it's up to us. That's right, yes, your thoughts become your reality. For dreams to come, sometimes it's up to us. We must surrender, offer up our trust. Hey, men from the Philippines. So what is, like, sometimes when you pray and nothing is happening, that is because we haven't stopped and surrendered and said, okay, God, I trust you. What, whatever you want to happen, when you want it to happen, hey, Veer, then, you know, sometimes when we're just trying to do things our own way and we're trying to force it and fake it and try to make it happen and we're trying to, like, knuckle it and, like, fight God and do it our way, Stuff doesn't happen because <laughs> you guys, I've, I've been starting to learn that <laughs> well, maybe late in life that you can't force things to happen because it never turns out good when you force things to happen. Um, <clears throat> faith is the substance now of things hoped for that faith will manifest your dreams for more. So it's not enough to pray. You actually have to have faith that it's going to happen. You can't just pray and then go, God, please do this for me, and then go, he's taking too long. I'm going to do it myself. And you try to take over, and you think your plans are going to work out better. You, you have to have faith. Otherwise, there's no point in praying, right? Because Scripture says that faith without works is dead. So that's the, that's the pairing, right? You have faith that it's going to happen, but then you do the works, okay? <clears throat> did, I ever guys, did I ever tell you guys the story about 
um, that church that was praying for a drought. I'll tell it to you again if I haven't told you that story yet. So faith without works is dead is what we're talking about. So there was a drought. And Mia, I'll get to your question um, when I'm done teaching on this for a sec. There was a drought and this church kept praying for rain, kept praying for rain. And it never rained. And this is talking about having faith. And one Sunday they prayed and they prayed for rain because they weren't getting any food and they weren't growing any crops. So... So the next Sunday when they prayed fervently, one little girl came, one little girl came to church with her umbrella, but nobody else in the congregation did. And the pastor said, you know why there's no rain? It's because none of you guys have faith. And the congregation was like, yes, we do. We have faith. We were there praying for two hours, praying fervently for the rain. And the pastor said, if you had faith, you would have brought your umbrellas. So what do we need to do in our life? You know, you're praying for a dream to happen, but then you haven't prepared for it. You haven't put in the works. I mean, I'm thinking of a situation in my life right now where I'm praying and praying and praying that my zombie movie will finally start making some of the money back that we spent on it. And then I get... Um, an email from the distributor and they say your zombie movie Cannibal Corpse Killers is now finally making money um, overseas not yet in America so he wanted to send me a check and here I am praying that my film will make money at least enough to make back what I paid to make the zombie movie and I hadn't opened up a business bank account so in some ways, that shows that I did not have faith. Because if I was like, oh yeah, my film's gonna make back all this money, I would have already opened up a business bank account. So you can see that I kind of maybe thought, well, oh, maybe it's never gonna make money because statistically, like 90 some percent of independent films not made with a studio never see a penny back. So now the distributor has had this check sitting in his office for like two months to give me and I don't have a business bank account but I will say <laughs> I have gone to the bank three times to try to open a business bank account and it hasn't worked each time <laughs> the first two times I went to the bank they said I didn't have the right paperwork so the third time I went to a different bank and um, they couldn't find my paperwork with Secretary of State of California. So I was trying I was trying to do that the day before Christmas, open up a business bank account. Anyway, um, so that is like, what are you guys doing in your life right now where there's something that you want, something that you've prayed for, but you're not following it up with the works. You're not having the faith enough to take some steps towards making it happen, right? The people that pray for rain need to bring an umbrella. The people that need to want to make money back from their business they did need to have a business bank account so think for yourself in your life what are you doing where you've prayed for something or you really want something to happen but you don't have the works to back it up if it does happen like you're not ready this is we're going into 2022 and we have to get ready for what's to come we have to get ready for our dreams to happen okay according to your faith be it unto you. Just need a little. A mustard seed will do. How many of you guys know? Um, let me see if I have it here. Ah, okay, I teach about this in my course. Um, so this is, I don't know if you guys can see this. Let me turn it this way. You see these little, little seeds in here? These are actually mustard seeds. So this is how much faith the Bible says you need. It's so tiny, look at that. You only need a mustard seed of faith to make your dreams happen. So that's what scripture says. If you have the faith of a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and it would happen. So it's not like you need massive amounts of faith to make it happen. You just need a little, and God gave everyone the faith they need to make their dreams happen. Okay, so you have all authority. 
God's given you authority. He's given you, right, the book of Genesis. God gave you control over the earth. You've all authority. You've nothing to prove. Command those mountains without doubt to move. So when you guys pray, when you guys want your dreams to happen, you can't have doubt. You have to be faith, 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 faith. You can't have doubt. So that, that is the key. Faith is, is what's going to make your dreams happen. Doubt never made anything good happen. Hey, Stacy. All right. You are given dominion over the earth. God cares for the sparrows. Think how much more you're worth. Some of you guys are saying, well, God won't answer my prayers. God doesn't care about me. And yet, in the New Testament, it says he knows every bird that drops to the ground, every sparrow that drops to the ground. God knows about it. As a matter of fact, he says he knows every hair on your head. As a matter of fact, the Old Testament says he has our names written in the palm of his hand. That's how much he cares about you. Your name is written. God has got a tattoo of your name. How cool is that? All right. <laughs> He will not forsake or leave you to the end more than a brother. He's a closer friend. God is telling us that he's a closer friend to us than our own brother. Can you imagine? You will accomplish what you dream and more if God's word is believed. It will bathe you to your core. Oh, thank you, Lily. Merry Christmas. Thank you for the gift. Reflect on God's word both night and day until the contrary thoughts have gone away. That's it, right? Change our thinking. How many of you have been guilty of having stinking thinking? I know I have. I've had terrible thoughts. And guess what? The more you think about the terrible thoughts, the more those terrible things happen, right? Because you become who you think you'll be, right? This, right? Old Testament, Proverbs 23, 7. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm not talking about those kind of tattoos, Stacy. It's just an expression. It's just an expression about how much God loves you. That he would have your name written on his hand. Who knows, he could have used a Sharpie. What do they use in heaven? I don't know. <laughs> okay, so you will accomplish what you dream and more. God's word believed will bathe you to the core. So when you start believing God's word and you let it bathe you and cleanse you from all the contrary thoughts, all the thoughts of doubt, all the thoughts of it's not going to happen, all the people that have said, why are you bothering? It's never going to happen. Your dream's not going to come true. Blah, blah. All the people that want to speak ill of you. Oh my goodness. We just have to what does God's word say about me? He says all things are possible. He says he is for me, not against me. He says I'm above and not beneath. He says I am more than a conqueror. Do you see how just focusing and meditating on God's word will wash away all the junk? All the junk that's trying to weigh you down? Okay. Reflect on his word both night and day until contrary thoughts have gone away. If you've still got of thoughts that are working against you of how things aren't going to work out, then that's something that you need to that you need to get rid of. Now ask and you'll receive. Knock to find. So right, that's what scripture says. If you knock, God will answer the door. If you ask, you'll receive. But most imperative, renew your mind. How many of you need? to go into 2022 with a new mind, a renewed mind, a mind that thinks differently than it did this previous year. How many of you could have changed your thoughts and made them more positive, right? So we need to go into 2022 with a renewed mind. And how do you renew your mind? You renew your mind by reading what the scriptures have to say about you. What, is, what does God's word have to say about you? That's what's gonna renew your mind. Since as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. You can become what you thought you'd be. So it all has to do with what you think in your heart. That's what you will become. Yes, sweetie pie. You need a chew towel. You need a chew towel? Where's your chew towel? Um, no. You don't know? Yeah. Did
Did you have it last night when we went to bed? Yeah. Where do you think it might be? It might be in... It might be where? And Daddy's. <laughs> okay, I'm ready to get to your questions. You got a bunch of people saying hi, Eli, Elena, and Brittany. Via says we should all program our minds to practice positive thinking. Absolutely. Ray is saying good morning. Karen is back. God bless me with one page feature in Forbes magazine. Congratulations, Magnetic FM Radio. That's epic. I hope that leads to a lot of new business opportunities for you. Okay. Uh, Lily says Merry Christmas. You think it's in Daddy's room? Yeah. Maybe that's my room too. It's not just his. <laughs> not, not daddy's room. Okay. What do you think our life's big what do you think is our life's biggest prison? It's well it's our mind, of course. Um I'll be right back. I'm gonna get him a chew towel. Hold on. How long we go without them interrupting me okay good type in your questions that you asked earlier that I didn't get to because now I'm ready to answer your questions Ray it was a good Christmas I, I can't complain um, I even got a couple presents I didn't expect that mm. okay let's see is it Kryzian Kryzian and I say that right? It says, I love you because I saw you on Darman. Cheryl says, can you say hi, Paige? Hi, Paige. What is your phobia? Um, I don't know if I have a phobia, but there are things I don't like. Um, I don't like cockroaches, and they're pretty big in California. However, I have to say the bugs are bigger in Texas. Um, Danny asks, why don't you use the lovely Christian scriptures and teachings in Darman? Um, I don't know. You'd have to ask him that. You know what? I think he's trying to appeal just the teaching the message. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know if I were to guess. I would say he's trying to be accessible worldwide to all different faiths and religion to teach good things. I don't know. Sometimes it, it shuts people out if you talk about one specific faith and not another. Oh, well, hello there. I forgot to brush my teeth. Plus yeah, stinky. they look pretty yellow. Yeah. Why don't you go brush your teeth? I can smell them from here. No. I forgot to take a bath because I found my toes are stinky. Yep. Yeah. At least you're recognizing it now. Mm -hmm. Elena says, hi, Timmy. <laughs> Do you believe in ghosts and the paranormal? Well, I don't really know what the definition of paranormal is, but I do believe in spiritual activity and demonic spiritual activity. And I don't know. I think sometimes maybe what we think are ghosts are really demonic entities. From the devil. Blake says, I'm from Texas and there are a lot of mosquitoes in the summer. There were a lot of mosquitoes in Minnesota. Big, big mosquitoes because we have so many lakes there. But now I'm in um, California and there's not really a lot of mosquitoes. Maybe unless you're near a lake. Uh, Vias is saying our life's biggest prison is the fear of what other people think of you. Mm, I think that's part of it, but I think it's is the mind, I think thinking negative thoughts and all different kinds of stuff is our biggest prison. But yeah, everyone has one. Uh, Olu, wake me. Wakami maybe asked what Elijah got for Christmas. Um, he got like 
little eggs with dinosaurs in, and he got like a Hot Wheels racetrack. He got a couple books. He got some clothes. Mommy, uh, do you like sloths, Mommy, Shiro? I don't know. I've never. Mommy, heard. have you seen my two plus? Yours is the turquoise and white one that says the doctor, the doctor that did your teeth surgery. Oh yeah. Go look for that one. No, I can't find it in the cup. We'll look again. I tried. Give me the cup. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Oh, look at Benjamin won the school spelling bee last week. Are you good at spelling? No, I am atrocious at spelling. You know, you don't want to see me spell. I, I misspell a lot. Anyone who's ever gotten an email from me probably has seen some misspelling. Colin says, a few weeks ago I was mocked. Oh, I'm not going to say the word because my son just walked in the room. I'm sorry you were mocked and people were prejudiced against you. Hey, Angel. Oh. Okay, where's your toothbrush? It's right here, dude. Um, told you it was in there. Go put that back. Mm, that needs to be clean. Okay, Rahab says you're my icon. Okay, thank you. All right, somebody, Karen, thank you. Karen sent me a little donation. I appreciate it. I want to be a Darman actor, says, is it Nazul? Nazmul. Okay. <clears throat> uh, did you like the song? Uh, yeah, it was nice. Uh, Natalie says, hi, Timothy. Do I like sloths? I don't know. I never met a sloth. Um, I don't know if I like sloths. <laughs> I think they'd be fun to watch. They'd be fun to see. What is their natural habitat? What country are sloths from? I don't know. Sweetie Pie says, love you. Uh, Marianne. Uh, hi, my name is Mikey. Okay, you must be on your mom's account or something. Uh, let's see, we've got Prysian. I don't know if I said your name right. How should I have dealt with it back then? You know, anyone who's like got negative comments or is making fun of you, Colin, I would just, my goodness, ignore them. When people are bullying you, they're just ignorant. It's just they just don't have a clue, and they need to just mind their own business. You know, it, it makes me think of, okay, Eli, everyone can see your sugar cookie. You get your Christmas sugar cookie? It reminds me of this rap song I heard years ago. It was like a Christian rap song, and it says, they say he without sin cast the first stone. I've been trying to throw bricks, but I keep breaking my arm. I guess my aim ain't really what it's supposed to be. I got a plank in my eye, and I can't see. I can't worry about you till I worry about me. I heard that hell is hot over a thousand degrees. I don't really know the specifics, but it ain't for me. I rap for royalty. That's my loyalty. I do my thing, young prince the king. Anyway, <laughs> that song is about the scripture where there was a woman caught in adultery. And... It's a sin to commit adultery, right, in the Bible. So the, the, the Jewish leaders yanked her out of the house, and they were about to stone her to death because that was the penalty for adultery. And so they asked Jesus what to do. And Jesus just knelt down, and he was just writing in the sand. And they're like, well, what we should do? She was clearly caught in adultery. She needs to be stoned to death. And all Jesus said was, he who has not sinned cast the first stone. So basically, all these people, all these people that were ready to murder this woman because she was caught in adultery, Jesus reminded them that every single one of them has sinned before. And then one by one, from the oldest to the youngest, they all dropped their stones and walked away. So anyone who's pointing out your flaws and the things that they think are wrong with you, they need to do some examining of themselves, right? So there's a scripture that says, take the plank out of your own eye before you can remove the sliver in someone else's. So it's easy for people to go around and point out, oh, you're doing this wrong, you're doing this wrong, or you shouldn't be like this, you shouldn't do that. Meanwhile, they got their own mess they should be dealing with and not going around pointing out what they think is wrong with you, right? 
we are not the judge. <laughs> we're not here to judge anyone. We, uh, we're not sinless. We're not faultless. We all make mistakes. And people who go around condemning others for their mess-ups, I teach about this in my next course called You Are Loved. <sighs> I have a whole teaching on this. So. Anyway, it's one of those things that I... I are you enjoying yourself? Yeah. Yeah. Having your mommy hold you while you eat sugar cookies. This is the life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is the life. Oh, to be a kid again. <laughs> oh, where's my Kleenex? You got some like snot coming out of your nose here. Just... Let me get that. Okay. All right, I think I lost you guys for a second. Okay. How do you deal with people who are shunning you and are pretentious? I don't deal with them. I try to have nothing to do with them. Uh, I wish I was a kid again. Life was easier and simple. Momo said. When India won the OD World Cup is 1983. Okay. Did you see Businessman Destroys Girl's Guitar? I haven't watched that one yet. I've seen all the ones, I think, besides that one. I think that I was really busy the day that came out and then preparing for Christmas and all that. I'm from Belgium, and you can pronounce my name as Crane. Oh, I really had it wrong. Crane. Hopefully I said it right that time. Nice to meet you. Um, okay, so let's see. What do you think of, of us being a social chameleon? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I need to know what you mean by social chameleon before I could answer. Um, Lays, tell me, did you hear? Okay, that's not a message from me. I have not seen the new Spider-Man movie yet. Um, let's see. Is it, Lily asks, is it normal to cry when someone gives you harsh criticism? Um, I, I don't know. Some people cry when they get it. Some people get mad when they get it. Some people just think when they get it. it I don't know if there is a normal. It just really depends on where you're at with your you know, how you're able to receive feedback and how you are emotionally with it. Um, some people get really angry and, yeah, some people do cry. Um, so it's, you know, it's okay to cry sometimes. But sometimes I think the crying is because you've made it mean something. Oh, thank you, Angela. Thank you for the blessing. Um, you've made it mean something. Like, like if someone gives you some harsh criticism and you start crying, it's because you've made their criticism mean something about yourself. Like you've made it mean that you're not good enough or you're not smart enough. And that's actually what's making you cry, not what the other person said. Does that make sense? So anyone can say anything they want to us and it doesn't necessarily affect us unless we make it mean something negative about ourselves. Does that make sense? So I have, sometimes I have people on Instagram sending me messages and the messages get really sometimes nasty and harsh and critical and, and whatever. And <clears throat> a few years ago, I might've cried about it. I might've been like, oh my gosh, and I would have made it mean, oh, I'm a terrible person, or how come they don't understand, or that's not what I, I'd be freaking out about it. But now people give me harsh criticism sometimes, and I'm like, well, I guess they don't get it, or I guess they don't get me, they're not my tribe, or they're clueless, because that's not what was happening. So it's easier now that I have more, you know, emotional intelligence, and I'm sure of myself, and I know my worth, and I know, you know, it's easier for me not to cry about stuff anymore, and... I had a friend over a couple weeks ago and she was, she, and she asked permission for us. She's like, can I give you some criticism here? Can I, 
And I said, yes, go ahead. I am always looking to improve. I look forward to criticism now because sometimes, you know, we have blind spots. We, we don't always see areas we could improve. Sometimes, have you heard of the expression, you can't see the forest through the trees? So sometimes we will be, we can't see what's right in front of us. That's why it's important to have like friends that you can trust or to have a coach or somebody that you can, <clears throat> you know, give you advice and feedback who can see things from a different level, who's not stuck in the forest, who can see from a helicopter view above like what you're dealing with and give you advice. So yeah, I would say, I don't think it matters whether it's normal or not. I would be asking myself, instead of, is it normal to cry when you get harsh feedback? I would be asking myself, what is it about me or my, what I perceive about what this person said that is making me so sad or upset or making me cry? What is it about what they said? Am I making it mean that it's true? Am I making it mean that I'm not good enough? Am I making it mean that there's something wrong with me? So always, guys, the more developed you become with, you know, your emotions, the more you're going to, instead of blaming the other person for making you cry or making you mad, the more you're going to take and turn around what they said into... Why am I feeling that way? Why did I allow myself to cry? What, what is it about what they said that I think, you know, that's hurting me? So hopefully, hopefully you understand what, what I was trying to say with that. Okay, don't let negative comments you get get you down. Pay attention to the good comments. And how many of us, how many of us don't do that? How many of us, like, ignore the good comments? Sometimes we can get... 10 good comments. Oh, you really helped me out a lot. You're so great. You're so, you, you, you're inspiring me. You helped me get through this. You did it. You get all these comments and then someone says to you, you drew that? You, you draw like a third grader. You're not, you're not very good at drawing. And then suddenly we're like, Whoa! and all those good comments go out the window. We can't do that, guys. <laughs> we can't do that. You know, for a while, for a while, and I sometimes still do this. For a while, when people gave me like a really, really nice heartfelt message, I would save it. I would screenshot it. And there was a time when like if somebody said a negative comment and I would, instead of spiraling down into a, like a depression or sadness or think I'm not making a difference, I would then go to my folder and I would go read all the good comments. Okay, well that one person may have said that, but look, I got this comment and this comment and this comment. All these people that said, so, you know, I have to weigh on the balance. This one person, you know, sometimes, sometimes that person is having a bad day. Sometimes they just had terrible news happen. Sometimes they're, they're like not in the right place and they say something and they lash out at you. But it doesn't have anything to do with you. Does that make sense? Sometimes someone, like I've used this example before, a guy is so angry because he got fired at work so he comes home and he kicks the dog. You know, dog didn't have anything to do with you getting fired and sometimes we're just in the crossfire, right? So, so sometimes we're just the dog. We're just the dog that gets kicked. Um, thank you, Derek, for the gift. How did you survive filming Cannibal Corpse Killers in the desert? That was really rough. That was, some days it got up to 108 degrees filming that movie and there was no shade. There was no shade. Um, the, <clears throat> the vehicle we had, there was no, there was no air conditioner really <clears throat> working in it. And there was days, we filmed this over a long period of time, there were days where we were filming and, 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 and it was freezing. I mean, freezing. See your breath, so cold, shaking. Have you seen the, the campfire scene? I thought I was gonna die of cold doing the campfire scene. It was, and, and that vehicle did not have doors on it. So we're driving, we had to drive like an hour and a half in like, I don't know if it was January or February, 
up north and without doors on the car. And I'm like covered in blankets and huddling next to my co-star, just shivering. <clears throat> yeah, it, it, that was, it was rough. And, and a lot of places had no bathrooms. So you're just looking for a bush to squat out in the desert. It, that's like real indie filmmaking. You know, if it was a big budget Hollywood movie, they would have like the trailers and they would have heating lamps and they would have whatever. Um, you know, and my budget was like peanut butter sandwiches, you know, <laughs> clothes from the thrift store. You know, that was, <clears throat> hey Loretta. Okay, have you been to all the 50 states in America? No, your dreams online. Okay, I don't know what that's about. Um, have you heard of the AFL? The Well, I have now. What's your favorite city in America? I don't know. I feel like I haven't seen enough cities to have a favorite, but if I'm going to pick one from the very few that I've seen or been to, um, I really like Arizona. I know that's not a city, but there's been a few places in Arizona I really liked. I was recently in Sonoma. That was, that was really nice. Um, okay. How come to Western Australia for cannibal corpse killers? We have a lot. <clears throat> the deserts. Okay. Ray says, a good beginning makes a good end. Sometimes, yeah. It's, it certainly has a more hope to make a better end. Uh, I've been commenting on the comments box about being on your live. I'm so excited to be on here. Well, welcome. We're here every Sunday, me and this tribe of awesome people. Is Burbank a safe area in California? Yeah, it's one of the safer ones. For many years, it was rated I think it was rated safest city, or at least in the top 10 of California. So I would say so. Momo, no, I have never been to New York City. I've never been to New York at all. <clears throat> Angel says, I love your advice, Catherine. Yes, Cannibal Corpse Killers is a movie I filmed. Let me look, let me show you something. Oh, this isn't the official poster. I don't where do I have the, I don't know if I have the official, oh yeah, I have the official. Um, this is the casting, this is, well, this is the cast. I don't know if you can see it. That's the character Pike. That's the character Ruby. That's the character Slim. That's me. That's the character Scar. And then that is the character Boots. And this was the vehicle I was talking about that we filmed. <clears throat> Let me show you what it looks like. <clears throat> All right, this is my movie, Cannibal Corpse Killers. And we got a review from Dread Central that says, highly recommended for any fan of post-apocalyptic stuff, gore films, and zombie films. So you can see the back, there's Pike, and there's some of the, some of the characters. Zombies and stuff. So, yeah, Till Death to Us Part Pictures. That's my production company listed on the back, along with Sledgehammer Films. And it says it's starring Chris Shumway, Catherine Norland, Dennis Hager, Teresa Holly, Nate Philo, Ron Jason. Anyway, producers, Catherine Norland. So, pretty cool. That is available on all different kinds of platforms. <clears throat> show you since you were asking about it. Oh, is it in here? Oh, maybe it's in the other folder. Never mind, I don't see it. I was going to show you all the different platforms it was available on, like Tubi and Redbox and YouTube and Amazon. Anyway, Cannibal Corpse Killers is available. Uh, a lot of places. Okay, Brittany says it's a great movie. I've seen it twice. Love all that stuff. I want fake blood poured all over me, running down, <laughs> running around in the desert. I'm game. Okay, Brittany's in for the sequel. 
<laughs> Brittany can play the younger version of me in the prequel. <laughs> ah, gonna have to. Let's see. Um, so somebody asked what I'm most excited about for 2022. Um, to be on track with what I feel like is my calling and my purpose. And I'm most excited about not, like, not trying to be what others want me to be or expect me to be, but just to be living in my purpose with grace and ease and not forcing stuff and not trying to do stuff just because, well, like I said, like others want me to. Um, <clears throat> I'm getting my office organized. That was one of the things, um, one of my big goals for 2022. And I decided not to wait until next year to start. So I've been like organizing my office. I don't know if you saw it before, but I used to have like right to my right here. I used to have like a big TV here. It used to be like a big TV. And instead I have my slots for organizing all my papers. Cause before I just had stacks and stacks of paperwork on my desk that I needed to complete. And then when I needed to do something, I couldn't find it. And I'm having to spend time going through these stacks. So now I have like everything labeled and in, in drawers and my big main projects, all where I can find them. So I'm not looking through stacks and stacks of papers. Cause that honestly, that's always been my downfall is like having stacks of papers and not having time to get through them and more, more would come and, now I know where everything is, so I'm already feeling like pressure is released off me. And if someone says, oh, you need to turn in Timmy's, you know, medical, whatever, I got a slot right here for Timmy. I got a slot for medical. I got a slot for personal. I got a slot for poetry, for my courses, for marketing, for my appointments. When I have to go to an appointment, I need to bring paperwork. I just go to my appointment slot. Oh, yes, here's my stuff for the bank. It's in my appointment slot. Oh my goodness. Oh, huh. well look what's in here. This is what I was looking for. Okay, Cannibal Corpse Killers is available on iTunes, Vudu, Tubi TV, PlayStation, Xbox, Redbox, YouTube, Fandango Now, Google Play, and Amazon. So whoever asked, it just happened to be in this folder I picked up. Imagine that. I think this is my appointment for the bank. I took it to the bank because I'm opening the business account for this movie, so <clears throat> that's why I had it in there. Okay, let's get to your questions. Um, did fans of your work think you were the woman who took away the homeless man's dog? No one has accused me of that yet. No one has thought that was me. <laughs> um, was, she, was Rebecca blonde in that one? I think the reason I got she I got confused for her before was because she had that blonde wig on in the bank one because they wanted her to have like a Karen look and typically Karens have been stereotyped as being blonde white ladies with a certain haircut. Mm -hmm. So Blake, um, Vias is talking about the behind the scenes where I was telling them what happened when I went to a movie theater once and a fan recognized me and they loved my work and they were telling me how I was in their favorite episode about the woman that wouldn't give a loan to the black man. I said, no, that wasn't me. And the woman was like, yes, yes, that was you. You were the bank teller and you were, and she's telling me about the story. I said, no, no, I wasn't in that one. And the third time she was like, yes, the one where you were the bank teller. You're my favorite. That was my favorite. And you're my favorite. And I was like, I didn't want to fight with her because I was like, oh, yeah, no, well, thank you. I just said thank you. Because after two times of trying to convince her that wasn't me, she still was saying it was me. Anyway, that was funny. Oh, fluctuations make me afraid, ma'am. How to stay long. <sighs> You got to really, and I'm assuming you're talking about the stock market. You know, that's difficult. You're a day trader. Are you a day trader? That's difficult when you're a day trader. I, I you know, I tried day trading before. That was a lot of like, oh, up early when the market's open. Wait, wow, what's it doing? What's it fluctuating? Should I get in? Should I get out? What are the, I, I just, 
I couldn't, I didn't, I didn't want to do that stress anymore about money in the stock market. So, you know, I'm more of a buy and hold kind of person. And statistically, like for the last hundred years in the stock market, the stock market will statistically make about 10% a year. Yeah, some years it's negative, but then some years it's like 18%. But over the last hundred years, it has averaged about 10%. So it's hard to get a 10% return anywhere else. So I, I say, you know, you've re done your research, you get a good stock, you just, and you diversify. I'm more of a buy and hold person because I didn't like that stress. I didn't like getting up and being glued to the to the market and the candlesticks and ooh, sell now, ooh, buy now. Uh, like, with that kind of stress, I didn't want to deal with. Like, I feel like life throws up a, throws us enough stress that I didn't want to have to like think about that when it comes to money. Okay, let me see where are we at. I like when Rebecca plays nice roles. Blake says, how do you become an actor on Darman Studios? Uh, Top Sniper, they put their casting notices on LA Casting as far as I know. So if you're on that website and you see a role come up, you submit for it and hopefully you get an audition and you audition for it. Momo says, would you visit Australia and would you want to learn more about the country? Um, sure. I mean, it's beautiful there. Um, but man, there's so many travel restrictions with COVID right now. Hey, J. Rob says, good morning. Uh, BH says, I'm 4'11". I feel like I need to lose weight in order to fit in. Well, I mean, if that's the only reason you want to lose weight, why bother? I mean, if you want to do it for your health, awesome, great. Hey, Loretta. Sure, but to fit in? Eh, I don't know. Maybe you were made to stand out. Okay, let's check your questions now. What three habits will you improve in your life? Um, I'm going to improve this year getting and staying organized doing more exercise and eating more vegetables. I think I'm pretty good on my other habits. I'm disciplined, I work hard, I work long, I spend time with the kids, I've got a good balance, um, spending time with God and prayer and reading. Uh, so I'm pretty good in most areas, but I could definitely eat more vegetables and Last year, I've probably only worked out 10 or 15 minutes a day, so I'm going to increase that to 20 to 30 minutes a day. <laughs> uh, everyone is made to stand out, Tony says. Hey, Tony's on the live stream. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, no, I have not seen that short film, VS. Oh, Brittany, thank you. I appreciate your gift. Um, Mommy. Yes, sweetheart? Can you help with my dinosaur? You need help with your dinosaur? Yeah. Okay, so Eli got these little dinosaurs and you have to like put their tail on and their head on. Oh, you're changing the body parts. Okay, let me see if we get this. Oh, this, yeah, this is a tough one. Ugh. I don't know if I can get, I think this tail is meant to go on the other dinosaur. It's not the right color. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Um, were you always the same person? No, thank goodness. Um, so my husband was telling the story last night to people at Christmas about how we met. And one of the things he said is that I am a complete 180 different person than whom he met. So thank goodness I'm always learning and growing and becoming better. Um, I love to quote... I saw a quote somebody said, well, I, I love, just love quotes, but I don't even remember who said it. It was like on a meme or something. And it was like, I think I'm mixing up two different memes, but one of them was a quote that said something like, if you're still talking about who I was last year, then you don't know me at all because my, I don't know what it was saying, my, my, my changing game, my improving game is on point. It was like, 
Yeah, if somebody is talking about who I was last year, even that, I'm not the same person. So, <laughs> Brittany, memes are life. Yes, I, I, I even made a meme that I framed recently. <laughs> this is a meme I made. He healed me richly with his love like no one could before. And though he's done enough, he's steadfast to do more. How's me talking about my God? Um, I used to have a, a page on Instagram just for memes. It's called Poetic Prescriptions. And I haven't posted on it forever, but a bunch of my uh, memes are on Poetic Prescriptions on Instagram. Now I just put everything on one page because I just, ugh, I just don't have the, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I love memes. Um, we all change at some point, Jonathan says. Nice to see you, Jonathan. It's been a long time since you've been on one of my live streams. Um, awesome. VS asks, what do you think of the traditional letter grade system used by many schools? I don't know. I guess it's okay. I mean, my son's school doesn't use that. They have, they use a different one. It's like E for effort. I don't even know what it all means. It's different letters that mean different things. S for satisfactory. Is it N for needs improvement or something? I don't know. I think they all kind of serve the same purpose. Okay, will you do a face swab? Uh, I've never done that app, so. If you were to stop five habits, what would they be? I don't know if I have five habits to stop. Um, five habits to stop. Maybe stop working after I'm tired. Um, maybe be easier on myself. Um, Those are the only two I can think of right now. I don't have a ton of bad habits. Oh, you know what my husband would say? My husband would say, my bad habit is interrupting. <laughs> he talks really slow. So sometimes I think he's done talking and I'll say something, but he's not done because he's very thoughtful. He's a thoughtful thinking person who unlike me actually like thinks before he speaks thinks of what he wants to say before he says it. <laughs> that is a habit I could do more of. Instead of just blurting out what's on my mind, I could give it some thought and think about what I'm going to say before I say it. So yes, uh, apparently interrupting is a bad habit of mine. Uh, maybe some of my clients on here will say that I have that habit. I don't know. I try to be a good listener. Um, Jonathan says it was a stressful week, so I feel better enough to take it on. Oh, a less stressful week. Oh, good. Brittany says that's adorable that it's framed. Mona says it's been crazy days for me, but I'm anticipating smoother days. I'm mentally overwhelmed. Oh, I'm sorry you're going through that. Maybe we can talk about that this afternoon a little bit, if it would be helpful to you. Um, okay. Or just improve the timing of doing things. My teachers pick on me always. What? What the heck, Benjamin? What do you mean your teachers pick on you? Give me the details. What do they do or say? I want to know about this. Um, let's see. I do that too accidentally. When I get excited and I have something I want to say, yes. Um, Momo says I interrupt a lot as well. Okay, so that's not just me. <laughs> I'm guilty of interpretation as well. What is? What do you mean? I'm not sure what we're talking about there. What's your biggest pet peeve when it comes to social media? Um, I don't know. Maybe people like pretending their life is so much better than it is. I mean, okay. I, but balance. There's balance. There's balance. Not always making everything look picturesque, beautiful, photoshopped. Everything is amazing. But then also people use it to post like negative, negative, negative. I don't know. I think, you know what? I think what you post is a reflection of who you are. So you want to know about someone? See what they're posting, right? Do you like skunks? Why the heck would I like skunks? <laughs> uh, idiot crazy 
Bus Cots asks if I've ever eaten a banana. Well, my friend, the smoothie is bananas and pineapple. So yes, we love bananas. I usually buy like six or eight bunches at a time. Yeah, we like bananas here. We meaning me. <laughs> uh, let's see. How many states in America have you been to? I don't know. If I were to guess, maybe seven. Uh, what are you doing for New Year's? I don't know yet. I don't have any plans yet. Have you ever tried boiled lettuce? No, but I've had boiled cabbage. Does that count? Um, okay. Okay, so here's what Benjamin is saying. It's my Spanish teacher. He always tells me off and is rude to me. He likes to embarrass me in front of the class. You know what, I would go tell the principal. If that were me, I would tell the principal and I would go talk to the guidance counselor about it. Oh my goodness. Okay, Mona just shared a smoothie recipe with you guys. Bananas with peanut butter and spinach. That's a combination I can't say I've ever tried. Okay, guys, you know I'm on here for an hour every Sunday, that hour is up. I hope you guys have a blessed week. Thank you for everyone who left me a gift. Keep coming back. If I didn't get to your question today, hopefully I'll get to it next week. This I, live stream is sponsored by a video game. No food product, but video game. No, no, scroll with the video game. I, I think I own it for a really damn long time. No, no, we are not sponsored by the Scrabble video game. Nice try, though. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, y'all. Bye.